interview with um, another follow-up with our life coach, Marcus Watts. So what's up, Marcus? What's going on, guys? How you doing? Glad to be here, Chris. So I uh, hope you guys are doing well with the first five days. You know, we've gone through a course of an elimination, which the intention of that first part of the program was kind of eliminating a lot of the pro-inflammatory foods and substances from the diet. Again, the intention is not to demonize any one food, but really to allow uh, for this phase two uh, cycle of the program, which is going to basically allow your body to heal itself from within, kind of reset your dependence on caffeine and alcohol and some of these other substances that in too high amounts can be toxic and harmful and to gain you give you a better understanding uh, about the why of you know those foods and that's the way that they're sourced are really uh critical to uh whether they help promote health or um prevent health so marcus is gonna dive in to provide a little bit more insight into the about the why why we eliminated those key uh, foods and substances from the diet, how uh, it's important to stick with that program through these next 10 days, uh, and how that's aligning as closely to the green zone that we've established in the, uh, the program manual is going to be critical for you to optimize your success and results throughout the program. Marcus? Awesome. Yeah, so, uh, you know, just like, like Chris said, we're just going to go through um, the different things that we are eliminating, and we'll talk a little bit about why. And, and again, I, I think the biggest thing to demonize certain foods, that's not, in this case, with this program, that's not what's happening at all. You can put yourself in the best position. So the first one that we're talking about eliminating is, is alcohol. There are a lot of inhibitors with alcohol, with fat loss, with muscle pain. Um, people will kind of make a lot of jokes, even especially like, um, you know, in the, the CrossFit community, you know, about going to Saturday wads after having gone out Friday nights and stuff. And it really is a massive inhibitor on your performance. Uh, I'll, of course, a ton of studies link it to uh, general mood. I don't think we even need to get into that type of stuff. But in general, we're talking about the inflaming of the gut, the inflaming of the joints. So the first part of the elimination is is alcohol. The second is sugar. And I, I'm pretty sure that we probably don't even have to go too deep into this one. But again, we're talking the dependency. So you'll kind of hear me go back to this a few times, but we're not saying that you shouldn't go and, and enjoy something that's sweet. But we are saying, especially in this phase, that you need to be aware of how your body's responding and if it's a dependency that you have on it, um, where you feel the need to have it for energy or not. Um, you can kind of almost refer back to the Snickers concept where you know, you're not yourself having Snickers. Well, that's because the, the body's responding the only way that it can. Um, if you're lacking micronutrients, your body's going to tell you to get anything that it can get its hands on in order to fuel the organism. So understanding that will help you be in a better position to get more greens, get more, and all the other things that we're talking about inside of this. The next one is uh, removing processed meat, um, dairy, and poultry. So some of you are might already be eat on the plant-based journey. Some of you are just kind of starting to kind of learn that stuff or you're somewhere in between where some of this stuff is already done and, and some you have. But of course, the first part is to start to remove the processed meat. Start definitely, I almost like to say, Chris, honestly, like dairy is like the first thing. Like it's gotta, it's just gotta go. It's gotta come out. Um, we won't dig too deep into that, but just, just look up um, some of the studies and, and uh, you know, what milk is doing to your joints, doing to your gut. Um, many pro athletes, I was just having a conversation the other day with a guy, a good friend of mine from Naples, Florida, who does a lot of the combine training. Actually, he's in Tampa right now. Working with a ton of, uh, they had about 52, 60 guys ready for the combine. And they were actually talking about how so many of the offensive linemen and defensive linemen, the bigger guys, um, and it's trickling down. It's like, it's, it's everyone, but it's just really crazy to hear these massive guys, 350, 340 pounds, 300 pounds, and they're talking about removing dairy from their diet and how they're noticing such a big difference in joint inflammation, you know, their elbows, their knees, their ankles, things like that. So just starting to eliminate. And what I, what I like to say, and Chris, if, if you guys have a different philosophy, just let me know, but I'm not saying 100% remove all this stuff. If you can't, that's okay. Again, your body has a dependency on it. So if you do that, it's going to go into survival mode. It's going to start making you feel bad. Where, you know, you can get things like when people are doing the keto. I was talking about this in a live talk the other day. They call it the, the, the keto flu. Or they call it the, you know, back in the day, it was like the, the paleo flu. And that's really, that's a short word for your body's going through change because it's used to getting energy one way and now it's being forced to get it another way. 
So the next thing that we'll go to is uh, the grains and the processed carbs. So, you know, I, I, I'll always go back to, you know, if you're reading a label on something, if you can't pronounce something on the label, you probably shouldn't eat it, right? Um, as well as if it's uh, got more than five ingredients. That's always kind of a rule that, of, of thumb that I'll use back from the old CrossFit days. Um, but in general, uh, we want to remove grains and, and processed carbs because we're talking about the digestion of and absorption that's happening in the gut can start to get really difficult um, without getting too crazy. You know, there are some foods that um, your body can just break down naturally, right? Which is going to be a little a little bit easier. Greens. Um, some people won't process certain. Foods, and I'm going to touch on that. Listening to your body, but like corn is one food that your body just normally just isn't able to break it down as well, right? Grains, another. Certain nuts actually can't absorb all of the nutrients because the outer shell, what's on it, the, the, the gut just can't break it down. So that's one one place that we want to start, or one reason that we want to start. The second is, like I said, knowing how your body responds is so important. And while you're consuming, while you're consuming alcohol and sugar and dairy and all these things, you can't really tell that your body's performing sub-maximally. Um, you want to be at a place where you can compare, and, and this is why I, this is another reason I love. I've actually got the product at the back, but another reason I love this product is because I know how my body has performed at different levels on different products. And every time I found something better, I was like, okay, I could really feel the. When, when I say better, I think, of course, I have to enjoy the taste, but I gotta deal with that. This is a great product, but it's how your body responds. Um, do you do, do you do you feel kind of bloated? You know what I mean. How are your bowel movements? Things, things like that that we could go on and on for. But knowing how your body responds is important. So that way, later after these twenty one, if you were to add in alcohol and the sugar, processed meat, and and I'll always I'll always tell people um, it's like the set two rule. So you only want to add in one food for seventy two hours to watch how your body responds before you start adding in the sugar and you have a drink. And because then you won't really be able to tell this. Um, so when you are taking these things out, later on, as you start to introduce stuff, which we all will sooner or later, you'll know, wow, when I wasn't having this, this is how I felt. And now I'm having this and I feel this way. So just learning so much more about yourself. And in general, we're just trying to make it easier on, on your body uh, to go through the digestion process. Again, uh, it's, I always tell people to really pay attention to your bowel movements. That's going to tell you. Um, and in general, just take some notes on how you're feeling at the end of the day is a good one too. Uh, the last one uh, is going to be caffeine. And, and again, we're not saying that it's necessarily bad, but I will always say that of anything is bad for you. If you consume too much water, you the water poisoning, and you, we literally can't say it. Um, so that's kind of a, a way to approach it. Um, we're focusing on the dependence of caffeine in this scenario. So you take pre-workout, for instance, when you're working out, right? It gets to a certain point where everybody's like, they're taking like two or three scoops, right? Before they would take like a half a scoop and they were just wired. Well, that's because of a, of a dependency. Your body builds up that, well, I'm going to get this much, I'm going to get this much, and you get used to it, right? Same thing with like vaccinations and all these super things like that, right? Your body's getting used to all these things that are getting, and putting it to combat that so it builds up a dependency we want you to give your body a chance to reset and balance that way when you do add caffeine back in it really is more like rocket fuel and you can see the change in your performance in general um i'm actually pretty big on caffeine whether it's in tea or it's in coffee but i'm not for um when i say caffeine i guess let me rephrase that coffee i love the flavor of coffee i don't need the caffeine necessarily um, and same thing like every now and then I'll just kind of remove it. And when I add it back in, it's, it, I noticed that much more. So. Awesome. Yeah. All really, really good points. And I want to kind of take a few things that you said and kind of elaborate a little bit further. So, uh, alcohol, I think we all know like how detrimental that can be to, you know, obviously inhibiting performance and really having the motivation to want to get up and be proactive, work out and do a lot of the other things that are going to contribute to, you know, sticking to the plan and mm -hmm. just overall feeling good. Right. Uh, you know, again, who doesn't love, you know, a beer, a glass of wine every once in a while, but when you're trying to go through like true transformational change, it's really you know, it's not going to hurt you to just kind of put that aside for 21 days and really hunker down and commit to this, giving up whatever three weekends, you know, that's your 
you know, not consuming alcohol, then you're going to see profound benefits to your health. And it's going to open up in a whole new world of, you know, time to you, right? Because you're going to be waking up earlier, you're going to have a whole Saturday or Sunday, and you're going to want to just be active and go out and do more stuff. So um, try to stick to that one. I know it's challenging, but I think it's a really crucial uh, elimination that allows everything else to be so much easier throughout the duration of the 21 days. Uh, next one, sugar. Um, you know, again, with food, I don't think we understand that food can be harmful to us. Um, you know, and, and these days, sugar is in just about everything, which is, again, why we want to kind of steer clear of packaged and processed foods, because unless we're doing very thorough due diligence, we don't understand that most of the times it's, you know, some type of sugar is the number one or, you know, top five ingredient in that packaged food product. And there's always uh, a study that I like to reference uh, as it relates to to uh, sugar dependence and the addictive nature of sugar. Um, you know, there's a great film called That Sugar Film that I recommend everybody watch. It'll kind of shed some light on this, but also a simple um, uh, scientific reference was there was an animal study done on mice and they, took, they put mice in, and in the cage was, on one side was cocaine and on the other side was sugar. And what they were, uh, able to demonstrate that sugar actually was proven to be more addictive than cocaine. Yeah. So, you know, that's should be alarming, uh, considering, you know, it's, if you have a cocaine habit, it's probably easy to change the group of friends that you're hanging out with and like, you know, situations that you're in, but you can't go to, you know, the gas station now without seeing sugar. You can't go through the grocery store without, you know, being at the checkout screen and seeing just it's all sugar, right? Because they know that it's triggering those same dopamine sensors, those same pleasure sensors in the brain that once we have that addiction, we want it all the time, right? And so if we don't ever give our body a chance to break that addiction, you know, it's just this silent killer, you know, really that we're consuming constantly. And to your point, that's why, you know, it does feel so crappy a lot of times when you make these uh, adjustments in these eliminations, getting that keto flu, and and that's basically your body going through some mm -hmm. small scale withdrawals from those toxic substances. So I think it's important to recognize and understand that, um, and just kind of know that it's part of the process. Trust the process and try to stick to it as much as possible because the benefits that you're going to achieve on the back end are are so well worth it. Um, they touched on the, the athletes in dairy, and I think that brings up a great topic as well. Um, I've been fortunate to be involved in the switch for good campaign, which if uh, anybody saw it, it was during the Olympics where a bunch of Olympic athletes uh, came out and they kind of, um, you know, th there was a lot of milk does a body good commercials and uh Dotsy, who's the kind of um the founder of that movement was in an uproar and said hey i'm a plant-based athlete i'm a you know gold medalist and i did it all on plant-based you know stuff alone and so she was able to uh really start this following in the athletic community and demonstrate that really dairy has no role <laughs> at all in, in human nutrition uh yeah. so I agree with you 100%. If like there's one thing that you're going to do and you're going to stick to it like rock solid, that's the number one thing that you should really think about doing um, as it, as it uh, pertains to like animal based products. Like just eliminate the dairy and you're going to see amazing uh, transformation in your gut health, um, your skin, um, and it just like eliminate a lot of those pro inflammatory uh, markers that are you know, associated with, with dairy. And I think, you know, a lot of athletes are really waking up to that and recognizing yeah. that. Um, yeah, they are. I was just at VegFest uh, this past week. I was, so I was with that, that same guy I was at VegFest uh, that I was speaking about. And he was just talking about the same thing. He's like, and, and he's not vegan, but he's like, yeah, I stopped drinking milk like years and years ago. He's like, but it's funny because growing up, we're told, you know, he was, he was a football player as well. I was a football player. And it was like, oh, yeah, you drink a gallon of milk a day and you eat a ton of peanut butter and jelly. And if you want to get big and strong, that's what you got to do. 
And so it's just like all like, six peanut butter jelly sandwiches, just drinking milk, protein, milk, 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 just milk, just drinking, drinking. Well, I, I got it. I, you know, I want to get big. And it's not, it's just not the way that it is at all. It's so crazy. And, and going deeper now with, with the Olympians, so actually, Kendrick Ferris is a friend of mine. I actually spoke to Kendrick right after the Olympics. And um, we were just talking about his training because years ago he was going to train me and just some things happened to work out or whatever. But um, he was just talking about, he's like, yeah, man, like, he's like, I feel amazing. And those of you guys that don't know who Kendrick Ferris is, please look him up because he's, again, all these athletes in the Olympics are dispelling this, this thought that's kind of out there. But Kendrick Ferris is, for American weightlifters, he's our best weightlifter because we have nobody going to the Olympics. <laughs> so he's, he's been consistently one of the strongest guys in the United States of America. Um, and he does not eat meat. And he's, he said that it's really, truly changed. I mean, he's always been a strong guy. I mean, frequently squatting over 500 pounds for reps you know, cleaning is crazy amounts of weight. But he was like, yeah, man, like, I feel great. I'm older than ever, obviously, which we, like, I always kind of say that we are, well, you're always are today, but he's like, I'm older than ever. My body feels better. My joints, he's like, it's amazing, you know, so. Yeah, and I, you know, again, I think we touched on this last time, you know, you're seeing that now become more widespread, you know, like Tom Brady, I was watching the game last night. He wants to play yeah. 45 years old. You know, that was yeah. unheard of in the game of football before, but it's due to the way that he's fueling his body and taking care of his body on a consistent basis. And so, you know, again, I think, you know, if athletes, elite level athletes are recognizing this, this is you know, a great opportunity to recognize it for yourself. Really, um, you know, breaking that psychological, yes. trigger, right? Because we've, We've been a marketing message for so long. Milk does the body good. We need, uh, you know, meat and dairy and all this stuff to be big yeah. and strong, but it's simply not true. And I thought, I don't know if you saw this at all, but earlier this season, I think it was preseason, um, I think it was Harbaugh came out and said, and he was like talking to his team. He was talking about diet and he said, uh, he said something about chicken. He said, yeah, chicken, stop eating chicken. It's a scared bird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, it's a scared bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. And, again, with the meat and the way that we've developed this program is uh, it is intended to be 100% plant-based if you are committed and ready to do that, but also be able to provide a roadmap for those that aren't ready to fully go away completely from meat. But as far as animal products, definitely do a full elimination of the dairy and any processed meats absolutely cut out uh, for the duration of this program. In addition to the pork, the poultry and everything else that we mentioned, we do provide you know, the allowance for some seafood and eggs from pasture raised hen um, just because you know, that's probably the cleanest. They're not without their own share of challenges, but for those that aren't ready to go 100% full in, you know, there is that allows to slowly get toward uh, that cleaner, more uh, whole food, plant-based diet and lifestyle. Which is, a, it's, which is a good point too, because I mean, you know, the whole, like this is, you know, the shirt from my company and, uh, or from my website and the website is the vegan transition. And honestly, when most people reach out to me, Chris, they're like, hey, um, I'm trying to go vegan, and I'm like, uh, first off, don't. Don't do that. Like, stop. Like, why don't you try not eating like an asshole? Number one, take out dairy and remove red meat and stick to chicken, fish, you know what I'm saying, and eggs, and then let's slowly progress. I mean, for me, I started eating plant-based in, like, 2014, 2015, um, but I didn't go actually go vegan until – a year, almost almost two years ago almost yeah. two years ago so it's like and, and i was on for a long time I, I haven't had dairy in years i mean since like 2011 but i once i took out first i took out red meat and then it was just chicken eggs and fish and then i took out the chicken and it was just fish shrimp and eggs and then it was like no fish but i'm still having shrimp um <laughs> and then it was like eggs for a long time and then i remember my mother was living with me at the time um, and, uh, I'm in my apartment and I always used to go to this farm. So now I only bought like eggs, like directly from a farm. Like the I can see the coop, I can see the eggs. Um, and if you ever wonder how real eggs like come, they actually come like the feces from the chicken is actually on it. And that's because that's what protects the egg. You don't even have to refrigerate them. You can just like have them sitting out. And I remember I normally would go and I would buy two dozen 
And I looked in the fridge, it was about three weeks later, and the eggs were still in the fridge. And I just told my mom, yeah, I think I'm ready to like, just come off. But it took it took some time. I never, ever like to tell people just, oh, yeah, they're just like, man, your body, everything that, if, everything that you mentioned before is exactly what I always tell people. Your body's not ready to handle that. You have a dependency on these foods. Your body's learned to operate sub suboptimally with the foods that you're giving it. And you don't know until you remove them and then you realize, wow, my, per- wow, my, my performance is up. My 5K time is down. I haven't even run in like, I think I had, a, I almost PR my 5K time. I hadn't run over a mile in like two and a half, almost three years. I was not doing any type of conditioning. I was just weightlifting. And I was like, man, how am I responding like this? Well, it's only, it's only the only change is back then I was eating one way. And, you know, now, you know, five years later, you know, five years older, I'm, eating a different way yeah <clears throat> yeah it's awesome and i think that another important thing to to bring up is you know in phase two it's not about deprivation it's not about depriving no, yourself no. of certain things so we really want to emphasize eating you know as much as you want as you want of those whole plant-based foods eat until you feel full you know stick to the green uh zone of the program uh additionally that's why we created the essential shakes to be what they are right it's statistically known that over 97 percent of americans fail to meet one or more key vitamins and minerals in the diet simply even even those that are eating a really healthy whole food plant-based diet even more so those that are vegan you're simply not getting enough b12 k2 vitamin d3 which are so critical for optimal health and wellness and you know that's really the intention of adding the shakes in in phase two is to make sure you're providing your body with that nutrient density it needs to feel good while you're going through this transition you know because that can be a difficult thing and it takes time for the gut to be able to change and absorb all the nutrients from whole foods alone and so that makes it super easy and convenient and then the line of supplements really are additional targeted things so like instead of caffeine you've got the protect which really charges up your mitochondria which is the powerhouse of energy in your cells so that's going to produce some more natural energy to help you feel good throughout uh, throughout the transition the uh, soothe product which helps to further reduce the inflammation in the diet by shifting the ratio of omega-6s omega-6s we're eating most Americans are eating 20 to 1, omega-6 to omega-3. So changing that ratio and getting it closer to omega-1 uh, uh, one to 1 yeah. is going to drastically really reduce overall inflammation in the body. Um, and so that's really the intention of the products that are being used throughout this part of the program is to provide the body with the energy, the right type of fuel, and the nutrient density uh, that you need to feel good and provide the body with what it needs to um, optim- uh, function optimally. You, you, this will, this will, you touched on something that it, it, it reminded me. This will actually be a good one for you guys to use, like, just to share this little clip here. So what you're talking about, about, about people saying, okay, well, people are always asking like, oh, whoa, whoa, like what vitamins and stuff do I need to take? Like, I want to try plant-based, but I, I, I feel like I need, you know, I need B12. And I was like, I feel like, what do you say? I was like, I don't take any, I don't take any. And I go to the doctor, and I get, this is what you need to do. You need to go get blood labs yep. because once you get blood labs, you'll know where you're starting. So I went to get blood labs, you know, I was, I'm, I just turned 35, you know, I was 34 and I'm like, man, like, I just don't feel explosive like I used to. I felt a step slow. I was like, man, it might just be that time for me. So I went to go get checked for my testosterone levels and, and I needed some adjustment there, but they were like, oh man, your levels are really great. You must eat a, um, your B12 was great. You must, in your iron, they're like, oh, you must eat a lot of, uh, a lot of red meat. And I was like, I literally have not had red meat in three <laughs> And they're like, really? Okay, so the bigger question is why, right? Well, it's because I eat such a wide array of foods. Like, I'm not just eating. Listen, if all you eat is kale, all you eat are red peppers, and all you eat, I'm not saying that you're not eating nutrients, but you're not going to get a fully rounded. Listen, I eat different types of nut butters. If I go for two weeks, I have peanut butter, right, which is like the lowest quality of all the nuts. I'll have peanut butter. I'll have uh almond butter i'll have cashew butter i'll have chia seeds i'll have hemp parts i'll have olive oil i mean i i mix and i have so many different types of greens i'm gonna have, have spinach and kale i have it's just like a literally it's like a farm in my fridge right it's the mix all these different things cucumbers okay well i've had cucumbers for like the last month let me change it and then also trying to stick to what's obviously available in season 
that's what gives you the, the balance of nutrients. And that's, that's where I think the magic really happens. If all you did was eat chicken and steak and then potatoes, you're already not getting other nutrients, right? If all you ate was green beans and broccoli, you got to keep these different foods in, in because those different foods are giving you all these different things. Literally, like, that was one of the coolest things. I was like, okay, well, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing because clearly, you know, it's working. But it kind of comes in that, in that magic area. I know we don't have too much time, so. I don't yeah, right. Well, but I, th I think that's a great point. And I definitely encourage people to, if they have access to a farmer's market, yeah. start there, especially, you know, it might be a little bit more expensive for this program, but also understand you're probably saving a ton of money by eliminating the meat and animal based. Uh -huh. So, you know, for 21 days, you know, three weeks, go to the farmer's market and get your produce from there. It's going to be closer to yeah. the source. So that means it's going to be nutrient de more nutrient dense because it traveled last time on a truck, you know. Um, yeah. And that's what I guess we don't understand, you know, recognize all the time. We're not supposed to have access to, you know, these yeah. <laughs> fruits and stuff from all over the world in abundance all throughout the year. That's just, you know, yeah. and if we do, we should think twice about, okay, what is the nutrient density of that food? So definitely encourage people if they have access to it, um, you know, go to a farmer's market, get your groceries from there. There's also some great uh, delivery services uh, that we um, recommend. One is like Imperfect Produce or Farm Fest Direct, and there's a, numerous ones, but really look at where they source from and try to get as local as possible because that's going to ensure that you're getting the the most nutrient dense foods that you can. And then as Marcus said, make sure you eat the rainbow, right? Eat a full spectrum of fruits and vegetables and the right type of uh, grains, legumes and starches to make sure that you have high nutrient density uh, when you're constructing and building those meals. And that's what we've really tried to do with the, the recipes and everything that we suggest is it's looking at the total holistic picture of how those foods uh, promote health and will kind of contribute to the greatest success throughout the duration of the, the program. So Marcus, any uh, closing thoughts and takeaways for uh, the next 10 days ahead in phase two? Yeah, a couple things. First, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of get in a sticking to the process and some things that you can do on the go. So the best thing that you can do is I'll always say planning ahead. So, you know, planning ahead what you're going to have tomorrow, knowing the different places around your job or where you're going to be traveling that you might have some options to get foods that are going to fit for you. And then having some snacks that you can just grab and, and have on the go. For me, I love to just, I'll literally just grab like a handful of like almonds. I like pistachios. I always eat like a handful of pistachios, put those in a couple containers, grab like a banana, grab a, like a couple, another fruit, and like literally like one of the protein shakes. And I keep that in a little container, a little um, small lunchbox. And I know that on the go, if I get into a jam, I'm good to go. I can have a serving of nuts and a piece of fruit. I'm good. Two to three hours, four hours. I can grab a shake and I can have another serving of nuts and I'm good for another couple hours. So I think that those are the, the biggest things um, that can kind of help you stick to it. Like you said, finding your local markets. Awesome. Well, thanks again, as always. Uh, Marcus, really appreciate you taking the time and uh, providing thanks, our community man. with additional insight and you know, more background about your experience and what works for you. Uh, guys, enjoy the, in addition to the, um, the dietary part, the, uh, the challenges that we've got each day ahead in phase two. There's some exciting ones, some difficult ones, but stick to it. There's all, for each one, there's a very clear reason why we're encouraging you to do it. Um, and again, these all kind of help to stack and build on uh, this new life transformation uh, that we're trying to achieve. So uh, again, Marcus, thank you so much. Really appreciate yeah, your yeah. wisdom and your insight. And uh, we'll catch up with you in the next video. Appreciate it later.